This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. DBMS Scheduler is Oracle's full-featured scheduling solution that runs inside the database. It's pretty much a replacement for DBMS Job, which was an older way of doing it, but it has a lot of benefits over DBMS Job. You can stop a job, you can reuse code, reuse schedules, you can chain jobs together to create job streams. Obviously, in an overview like this, I can't go too deep, but I do want to get in and show you some of the details. DBMS Scheduler works with schema objects. These objects live in the data dictionary, just like table or views. So you can see on the screen, I've got Create Program. This is a scheduler program. It's not what you might think of an application. It's a defined program that points to some stored procedure or something. So there's a variety of objects that scheduler works with. There are programs, which I'm just saying it's like a PLSQL procedure or maybe an external OS program, something that runs an operating system. Scheduler can do that. Jobs. If the program is sort of the physical thing that you're pointing at, the job is the logical thing that'll run inside the database. A schedule says when a job will run. Chain is a set of related jobs. When one finishes, the next kicks off. File watchers sit in the OS and actually watch for files. So you can actually create a job that gets kicked off when a file shows up in the operating system. You can actually create credentials, which are either database credentials. So you can log into a remote database or into a, an operating system. So it can be operating system credentials. The destinations would be a remote database or remote server. You have groups. If you frequently are operating on certain objects together, you can actually create a group, and that's just a logical grouping, however you want to define that. There are job classes for prioritization, resource management, things like that. And then windows, which are tied to the schedule, where you, know, you might have your no-batch window during the day from 8 to 5, where it's more critical to have the foreground processes running. Or you might have a end of month, where it's the last three days of the month is a window that you wouldn't allow certain jobs to run. So let's look at what I have on the screen. I have the create program. So let's make sure my programs match. Sampler, schedule, proc, sample, scheduler, proc. So I'm going to define this procedure. Okay, so I created my logger tab table. So now I compile this. This time it compiled. So now I have my program. Uh, this is a name that's going to be in the data dictionary is the name of my program. The type is a stored procedure. You can have an anonymous block or an external program, like I said. The sample scheduler proc is the name of the procedure itself. It had three arguments. One, two, three. I'm not going to enable it now because I have to define the arguments before I can enable it. And then just some comments that will show up in the data dictionary. So I'll go ahead and run that. That block finished. And we come here and you can see I'm actually setting up my arguments. It's first parameter, second parameter, special parameter. Got first parameter, second parameter, special parameter. You give it the data type and any defaults that you want it to have. So I'm going to set no default value on this one, a default value of 8 on this one, and a metadata on this. So it's going to actually pick up the job name. Rather than having a default, you can have certain metadata that's available in the database. And in this case, Oracle knows what the job name is, so that's what it's going to do. So we go back now that we've said that, if you look, what this does is it's going to put a record into logger tab, and it's just going to do what the values of the parameters are. So that's pretty much it for defining the block. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and enable that program that I created. There's a built-in called create job. It takes a lot of parameters. You don't always need all the parameters. I'm going to go in create, use that create. All right, so let's go through here. I'm creating my job for my sample program. That's the one I just created. Start date, repeat, enable is false, auto drop. The job name, I'm assigning my argument values. Remember, the first parameter had a value. What's up? Schedule, and then when I enable the job, it'll automatically run. The auto drop says, get rid of this job once it's run. So this is like a one-time job. An anonymous block completed. So I'll come over to my connection. And we can come down here to Scheduler. Let's see. There's no jobs defined. We have my sample program. You can look at the sample program. Tell us what the parameters are, what the values are. And it actually worked when I said the enable. It submitted the job. 
but executed. What's up? Special. And you notice the one that I had set up as the metadata argument is the my job. So that's how you can do it programmatically. You can also come in here and do it through SQL Developer and actually create, say, new job and actually create a job. Or through Enterprise Manager, you have the same kind of information. Your jobs, you can look at the programs, and my sample program is right here. That's the one I created. Detail. See automatic things that are scheduled. And that is about it for Job Scheduler. It's a